cool. Hey makers, Devin here, as always, with Make Anything, and today we've got a fitness related project. Yeah, you heard me. Just because we're nerds with 3D printers doesn't mean we can't exercise. Personally, I get most of my exercise from rock climbing. And I've actually had this dream of building a completely 3D printed rock climbing wall. And I totally think it could happen. But before I embark on that giant project, I wanted to do something smaller that will still be like a proof of concept. With this project, I ended up using some unconventional techniques. So whether or not you're a climber, I think it's worth watching. There's some cool stuff. Oh, and I actually started this project a little bit before I started my YouTube channel. So I'm just going to pick up where I left off, um, but I'll explain everything. So let's do it. So here's what I've got so far. Uh, two plastic holds stuck onto three quarter inch thick plywood with epoxy. And it's hanging by these three inch screws that are drilled into a wooden support at a 45 degree downward angle. I drilled holes with the same angle into the plywood, and I've also got these flexible filament guards that kind of keep the screws from digging into the wood. And I've also got these flexible filament pads that keep the wood of the hangboard from scraping against the support of the house. So I didn't use any screws or anything, it's just epoxy holding these on, and I'm going to show you how I got that to be secure. So here's the SOLIDWORKS file, uh, and like with a lot of my models, I just started out with a rough sketch using all straight lines and I made sure to get all my dimensions in there. So I've got two slots here, sticking out by different amounts, and that's just based on my own skill level. So I think these are one inch, and the one above it is one and three eighths of an inch. And then I wanted a nice slope on the top that I could hang on, so I used a loft cut, where you basically draw a few profiles, and then the loft connects them all. And for the start and end constraints, I used normal to profile, where it kind of eases into the curves versus if you just use the default it goes like straight from one to the other as you can see here. From there I threw in a bunch of fillets and I created this sidewall which will start adding strength to the hangboard. I did a linear pattern to give myself some different slots and I mirrored that across. So now I've got a few different sized holes that I can hang from. And I'm printing this vertically, like so, and that puts the layers in an orientation that is best to hang from, basically. So since that's what I'm printing up from, you can see I didn't just do a direct fillet, but I did a 45 degree chamfer and then a fillet, which prints nicer. So the next thing I have to do is put some texture on the back so that the epoxy can really grab onto the print. So what I do is first create a single little cut extrude, and then I use this cool fill pattern feature which basically takes that one feature and spreads it across an entire surface. So you can see there's all these different settings for how you can distribute the pattern, but uh, it doesn't really matter for this case. And this one just looks nice and neat, so I went with that. And then finally, since this whole thing is 10 inches wide and I'm printing it vertically, I had to cut it in half down the middle so that I could uh, fit it on my printer, which only prints 6 inches tall. So what I did was make these kind of rounded dovetail type joints, creating a line and then offsetting 0.15 millimeters in both directions. So basically a 0.3 millimeter tolerance, which I know works pretty well for my printer. And here it is printing out. I was finally able to get a good time lapse of my prints, so that's pretty cool. I was also printing at about half of my normal speed with a 50% infill and three shells, because I want this to be pretty darn strong. So believe it or not, each half took 26 hours to print. This half came out super nice, so I just take it off with my trusty butter knife, as always. And as you can see, the parts fit together really well. 0.3 millimeters is just the perfect tolerance for my printer. I'm not sure how consistent that is across printers, and you pretty much have to learn what works best for your printer. So now I've got to trace out where my hold is going to be on the hangboard so that I can also roughen up the wood surface so the epoxy holds really well. So the first thing I do is sand that down to get rid of this waxy coating that's kind of on it. And then I use the hand drill to just drill a bunch of holes. So it's kind of a similar pattern to what I created on my 3D model. So once both surfaces have a lot of nooks and crannies to hold onto, I mix up a ton of epoxy 
and first I use it to put the two parts together and then I just slather epoxy on both the wood and the plastic and I put it in place. I had a little bit of extra epoxy so I just went ahead and started coating my print. Since the silver part had a few little gaps in it, I really want to reinforce it. So I probably could have stopped there, but I would have had some slippery holds. So what I'm going to do is add some texture by using sand. And just for the sake of experimentation, I decided to paint my sand white. And it ended up clumping together, but I kind of broke it up afterwards and it looks alright. And then I'm using XTC 3D, which is made to smooth out prints, but in this case we're going to use it for quite the opposite. So it comes with a part A and part B that you mix together, this foam brush and a mixer, and of course, very importantly, the instructions. So I'll make this little foil tray to hold my concoction once it's mixed up, and then I'll just go ahead and clip off this mixer so I have a nice 90 degree angle, which helps you really scrape the sides of the cup while you're mixing these two parts together. So it's really important that you mix the A and B parts really well and using the correct ratio. So I did it by weight since I have a scale, but you can also do it by volume mixing part A and B two to one. Once I have that mixed up really well, I add my sand and mix it up some more and I put it into this tray. So I could apply it straight from the cup, but by putting it in this foil tray, uh, it takes a little longer to cure since it's not in one big mass. And then I'm just taking this cheap bristle brush and dabbing on this epoxy. And that leaves me with a super rough final surface. And to make sure the sand really stuck on, I whipped up another batch of this XTC 3D and did another thin coat over everything. Then I used some 80 grit sandpaper to just dull down some of the really sharp points. And after giving all that epoxy 24 hours to fully cure, I was ready to test out my hangboard with a uh, beautiful form, as you can see. <laughs> and since there's a lot of surface area connecting the plastic to the wood, everything holds up my weight totally fine. So there you have it, folks. A totally custom 3D printed hangboard that uh, it works really well. And... Uh, well, I guarantee you won't find anything like this in stores. <laughs> it's a crazy color combination, I will admit. But uh, I just wanted to show off the fact that it's 3D printed and just embrace it, you know? Both figuratively and literally. Until next time.